Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. Just wanted to catch up a little bit on uh, what's been going on. Last weekend we shot a wedding for a friend of a friend. And uh, it turned out to be a disaster. So kind of today's vlog is really about the importance of having a contract. I'm going to keep this short. Uh, we're idiots because we didn't have a contract for it. We shot this wedding for free. Uh, which we need the portfolio, so that's fine. But that was kind of the point was to get a portfolio wedding out of it. And uh, at, the, at the rehearsal, we went through kind of everything we wanted to do, and they were okay with it all. And then the day of, they weren't okay with any of it. So we kind of got screwed while we were on venue, on set, uh, during the middle of the shoot. Uh, we couldn't get cameras on the stage. We didn't get any prep time. We didn't get any like pre-wedding stuff at all. No dress shot before the dress was on. None of the cute shoe pictures or you know footage. Uh, none of that kind of stuff. We didn't get any toasts. They didn't want to read letters. Like all the standard things that we we would normally want to do for a wedding. They they pretty much they didn't do any of it. So. Uh, they did say uh, during the rehearsal that we should bill them, but since we were doing it for free to begin with, just for the portfolio, we didn't really know uh, how much to bill them. So, going from like nothing to full price is, you know, a little frustrating, and um, we, we all kind of feel a little bad about doing that, but I mean, what else do you say? We we only have one wedding package. It's not like we have a bunch of different options. We have one wedding package. So anyway, the consensus was uh, that we would just tell them, look, we were shooting this for free anyway, but here's our normal price. You know, pay us what you feel like because we can't use this for a portfolio anyway. But now we have a contract for weddings. It's not completely done. Uh, there's some there's some typos and some things I got to get fixed and then send it over to the lawyer to make sure it's all you know Usable and whatnot But not having a contract is ridiculous uh, I don't know why we didn't have a contract for weddings. We haven't really shot any yet that were not friends and I don't know that even if we had one, we would have necessarily, you know, hey, you're our friend here, we signed this contract anyway. So, but the idea behind it is that if somebody wants a, a wedding that we can use in our, in our portfolio and we're willing to shoot that for, you know, less than full price, we have expectations. And if those expectations aren't met for us, then it's not usable in our portfolio so the wedding is worthless for us which means that instead of being compensated by a, a, a portfolio shoot we need to be compensated by financial means so we'll have two different contracts uh, one of which will be for a paid wedding it's pretty straightforward it's just got like you know our list of things we do and you can you can either accept or decline each of those services declining them does not drop the price any uh, the wedding is just one like one price so you just you know your information you kind of have you know what's what who's who's who and where you're going to be at and then some terms and conditions and then all of the services on these two pages um and then, you know, beside them, we'll have them check yes or no, basically, like they'll initial it if they want it, and they'll write declined if they don't. Uh, there is one service that we offer, which is the same day video, and if they decline any of the other services that we offer, uh, they don't get the same day video because all those other things are required to have enough footage for the same day video. Um, which also uh, brings back around to the point of if it's a portfolio wedding, which will be in the other contract that we write, um, if any services are declined, then they are automatically obligated to pay full price and they'll have to sign that as a separate line also, uh, meaning that, you know, we're going to shoot for our portfolio, you're going to get a great video out of it, but 
that that video is is being shot our compensation for that is having a portfolio worthy uh, film rendered video rendered and so if we don't get what we want for that video it's just not gonna work out we got to be compensated it's it's quite frustrating to have had to have gone through this with a, like a friend of a friend kind of thing we're not even through yet. We haven't given them the video that we shot yet. I haven't looked at any of the footage. Our editor doesn't have the footage. It's just here on my computer. Waiting on later this week, whenever I see him, to give him that footage. Um, and, we'll, and we'll see what comes out of it. I, I don't know if we'll have... I don't know if we'll have a, a video worth showing anybody or not. But, yeah. My production company shoots weddings. We now have... A pretty good wedding contract we are way affordable way better priced than every other cinematographer in the Oklahoma City area so if you know anybody in this area that wants to get married or if they want to cover our travel to it uh, we we're looking to shoot some more of them uh, but we're definitely not doing any for free which is you know I kind of want to bring up this too a little bit of a frustration is that it seems like people who don't have anything invested in a product have no interest in that product. So we're not going to shoot any more free weddings. Even portfolio weddings won't be free. We might shoot them cheaper, but without that financial investment, I feel like people aren't. Uh, they're they're not they're not they don't respect the product. They're not interested in the product. And so making them invest a little bit into it makes them care more about what we're doing, which is good for us. And the other thing too is, how are you gonna pay a photographer more than a cinematographer? We bring in 10 times the gear and we do 10 times the work and we're not imbeciles. We don't take pictures with direct flash on camera with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, you know, like what, what, that, I mean, no. If you're a photographer and you're shooting with a huge lens, there is no reason for you to have the pop-up flash on your camera being used whatsoever. You're an idiot. Stop it. Don't do that. You're a child. Get a cell phone, you'll take better pictures. Oh, sorry, my inner Jeff came out. God. All right, so Jeff would have a lot more to say about it than that. But, you know, that's that's essentially that. We actually did work with some pretty good photographers at this wedding, though. It just uh, it bewilders me that they paid the photographers more than we would even charge to begin with. And that's confusing to me because why have pictures when you can have a film? I don't get it. The, the film is far more interesting than pictures. If you can explain that to me, that'd be great. Why would you rather have a photographer than a cinematographer at your wedding? And, and by that I mean a team of cinematographers. We, we roll in with three of us. Um, two cinematographers and an editor on site to do a same day edit. <clears throat> Why would you rather have just regular photos than a whole freaking movie telling the story of your wedding? Somebody explain that to me. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Quit uh, boring you guys to death. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends. Come back for more. I'll see you guys next time.